far out. When I first had the idea for this and then I started putting it all into process and helping it all come together, I always knew this project was gonna be really, really cool, but far out, I've been absolutely blown away. Yes, g'day and welcome to a new video and welcome back once again to my little mini MCG. So in this video today, I wanted to talk and answer a few of the frequently asked questions about this project. Talk about some things that are actually happening with this lawn right now because there's a bit of an issue that I need to fix, as well as go through some of the upcoming projects on here, as well as out in my front yard that are coming up soon. But for starters, my previous YouTube video, it was about the making of this here in my backyard. Really good feedback on it so far. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But along with that on Instagram, I posted a reel on Sunday night. So it's now Tuesday about lunchtime. So in the last day and a half, the YouTube video has done okay. The reel on Instagram, when I checked it like half an hour ago, it was at like 1.7 million views or something like that. This morning, 6.30 a.m., I had an interview on ABC, the ABC breakfast show. And then throughout the rest of the morning was on Sunrise and the Today Show, which was just, yeah, pretty crazy. Between those things, I can barely remember a thing that I said or talked about. And apparently in the first two, um, my Instagram wasn't mentioned at all, like on the text on the screen at the bottom or anything like that. So that was a little bit of a bummer, but overall, a really, really cool experience to have that exposure on this field, but also, I guess, lawn care in general. And then I had a radio interview this morning as well with ABC Melbourne, so, yeah, for just a, a random dad, it's very strange. Uh, very strange to be on live TV and, and all that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I guess this, this project, uh, I'm glad people have found it cool, I guess. And so in terms of frequently asked questions, one of the most common ones I have been getting is why? Why would you do this? And I think the answer is basically because it's cool makes cool content and hopefully can bring more people to my page and all that sort of stuff, which flows into a bit further of a why, which for me with my social media, the YouTube is where I, ba I do basically just lawn care on YouTube, but on Instagram um, is where I'm posting a lot more of DIY and gardening and veggie gardening and all that sort of stuff as well. And it's been really nice in my journey. I've had lots of messages and lots of people that have contacted me and because they've seen videos and no doubt in conjunction with watching other people's videos and stuff as well but it's gotten them into lawn care it's got them creating um, a nice space to enjoy with their family it's got them to have a go at a DIY project or maybe it's got them planting some veggies or some doing some gardening so all that kind of thing really I'm trying to use social media to get people off social media get out into the yard lawns, gardening, DIY, all that sort of stuff. And so, yeah, hopefully with a bit more exposure of that and being able to push that out to more people, then yeah, I mean, it's um, it's a great hobby for me. I do enjoy it. I actually enjoy, probably enjoy the process somewhat of making videos behind the scenes than I do actually the publicity once the videos are live in many ways. Um, but yeah, it's obviously a really nice position to be in to be able to reach people and, and get that stuff out there. So that's probably a bit of the why. People also want to know about the stripes. So the light stripes is a great rolled away from you and the dark stripes is the grass rolled towards you so people been asking a bit about that and there's a bit of um, you know some urban myths out there about how you actually put stripes on the lawn but it's actually yeah, the roller on my mower rolling the grass over in those different patterns to create that effect and then everyone else wants to know about the goal posts as well I did briefly touch on this at the end of last YouTube video where I talked about the process of making the whole field but to go a little bit slower with it. I've also got an Instagram video that will be up probably a few days before this YouTube video goes live. But this is a 600 mil star picket. Um, down the end there's about, I'll get a tape measure. So yeah, this is a 600 mil star picket. And then I have left, there you go, it's about 190 mil, if you can see that, all right. And for me, my soil is quite soft at the moment. 190 is plenty um, of depth to be able to put it in and have the posts be pretty sturdy and not wobble around too much, which means that this, yeah, is around about 400 mil, the timber on there. And I just use leftover scrap timber. So I actually took some 90 by 35 and I stripped it down to about 77 mil. Um, so if you just used 70 by 35, then, you know, we'll probably be a little bit looser on the post because um, these are a really snug fit at that width. And yeah, 45 mil thick timber um, didn't actually fit because of the outside piece of the star picket. 
Um, and then you can see on the other side there, these screws aren't really doing much, but these screws here, just random ones that I had in the shed with a really wide um, screw head on them, they hold that into place really well. Um, and yeah, does the job really nicely. So yeah, eight star pickets. And then you probably want about eight times four, about three meters or so of 70 by 35 or 90 by 35 if you're happy to use a table saw and strip it down to a, a smaller width and then i got six lengths of three meter um three meter long pvc so this is 90 mil 90 mil pvc and i've got six of those so the point posts are 1.5 meters so one length of three meters makes two point posts and then these at 2.4 meters I found is what looked aesthetically the best, but you could probably leave them at three meters if you wanted to and save yourself a few extra cuts. But yeah, just for one set of goal posts, you can get three lengths of PVC, four star pickets, a little bit of timber, use scraps you got around the house, and yeah, that came out pretty good. And now the actual lawn itself. So it's still looking quite good from over there, but unfortunately, when you get up close, you can see this yellowing and these spots on the leaf. So bit of fungal disease in the lawn, which is really annoying. Not incredibly surprising though. A few reasons why this has come up is that firstly, I've been using a bit of extra nitrogen on the lawn recently to try and get it up for this occasion to get it nice and green and looking good, but using too much nitrogen can have its side effect. The other thing is we've been getting a lot of rain. So this is our rainfall uh, for September without checking it before talking about it right now. I reckon it's at least half of the days out of this month or within the last month or six weeks that we have had rain. Um, a lot of it at night time, which is not good for promoting fungal disease is having a night watering and night rainfall. And the other thing is, is that I recently got a soil test done. So you can scroll back a couple of videos and see that there, but something that was identified is a deficiency in potassium. So bringing up that potassium um, is gonna help strengthen up the root system long term. And yeah, it was really good to find out that there was an actually a deficiency in there. I'm a little bit low in magnesium as well. And boron is a product that I'm really low in, which I'm going to grab a product for as well. Um, but yeah, increasing those things, improving those things is just gonna help to make a real difference. And so this, oh, jeez, it's heavy. <laughs> this product here, uh, potassium sulfate, is gonna be my main product. I actually think it's quite a fine, um, powder that I'm gonna need to dilute. So I've actually got um, Channel 10 news are coming soon to record the story for tonight's news. So I'm gonna get that out of the way. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to dilute this um, to spray. I won't be able to use a spreader because it is, yeah, like a really fine sort of texture. So I'll need to investigate that. And then, yeah, the labeling on the bag is actually not great in terms of mixing rates whether you water it in afterwards or not. So I need to do a bit of investigation on that. I really, really want to avoid, and I always try to avoid using a fungicide. It's a product that's, you know, not the best. You really need to wear your PPE um, and be careful when applying fungicides. So it's not something that I just go, ah, oh, yep, there's a bit of disease, fungicide, bang, off you go. Um, yeah, I want to try a few other things first. Hopefully we get this rain tomorrow and then it dries out a little bit and warms up a bit. Get the potassium in there and that'll help out and I can avoid it. So anyway, I will be back probably later this Arvo or tomorrow morning um, to try and yeah, do some things to help turn around this fungal disease. All right, we are back a few hours later on an absolutely crazy day, but I've heard back from Emma, Lawn Care Australia. I appreciate her investigating some of these things for me because what's actually written on the bag and trying to find information online, almost impossible. So I appreciate her using her contacts to be able to get some answers for me. But in the end, I've got that powder. So it is, yeah, when I open up the bag, it's a real powder. So um, I've mixed that up in a bucket and I have given that a stir with the drill um, with a paint mixer thing on it. So I'll give that another quick go before I tip it in. So I've got some water in here and tip the product in and tip the rest of my water and it gives the sprayer a good shake. It is, um, yeah, the product's supposed to be 100% water soluble, so it shouldn't have any dramas with that. Mixing it up properly, um, gonna get it sprayed onto the lawn and lightly watered in. I chose to do it in the uh, today in the end because it's pretty decent spray conditions. The last thing I want is to wake up tomorrow and it is very windy like it can be before rain sometimes blowing in the weather so I'm gonna get it out now and give it a quick rinse off the leaf get it done
Good to get that water on there straight away. This is, some products are applied by the foliage of the leaf and they're absorbed by the leaf. Some need to get down into the soil, uh, which is this stuff right here to get down and to work in the soil. So I think long term, um, in terms of disease resistance and in terms of, yeah, just withstanding winter and things like that, correcting this potassium deficiency, <laughs> just wasn't sure if my microphone was on there. Correcting this potassium deficiency is gonna really help out. Um, you'll see me there, I, I could just like hide this somehow, but I may as well say it because everyone makes mistakes like this, but my sprayer has been struggling uh, and it just really was struggling then, which is why I went straight up and down. Um, I went that way and then I went that way, still going straight up and down because I, was, I would normally do every second stripe um, is where I would spray, but I was like, it's just not spraying out far enough. There's not enough power. So I came back and made sure I'd done every single stripe so there wasn't little strips missing. Because yeah, it would normally cover that area just fine. So I'd go that way and then that way. But it really started to struggle. I was like, do I need a new battery on this? Like what's going on with the sprayer? And I'm just thinking, I, I shuffled around all of my charges a little while ago and I don't reckon the, um, the sprayer battery is actually plugged in. I reckon I've been clipping it up and it hasn't actually been uh, plugged into anything. So I'll confirm that on the screen. It's, I'm pretty sure that's the case and that's very annoying. Luckily today I wasn't spraying something like liquid iron um, where I need it, you need a perfect application. I still, you want any application even, but anyway. Today I'm not surprised because my mind is just to, all over the place. But anyway, that's gonna really help a lot. Um, Thanks for any and all support that I've had with this grand final project. Um, hopefully the lines will hang around a little bit longer. Yeah, next week, actually, in terms of ongoing projects, behind you, I'm gonna have excavators in there soon to rip it up and build a feature garden. Front lawn, lawn renovation is happening next week, so you'll see that video. And I'm hoping to record something else out there soon, which will be a midweek upload next week um but yeah thanks very much for watching the video and the broader support on social media like i said with this project as a whole and yeah i will see you in the next video cheers